John, thank you so much for coming in studio and joining us today. Crystal, it's great to be with you. When I got asked to do the interview by Tara, I was so excited because the night before, I literally was on Instagram and I read a quote of yours that says, dreams don't work unless you do. (laughs) That's right. That just encompasses the whole intentional living. Mm -hmm. So you set out early on a journey to inspirational thought, but you were a pastor first. 25 years. What made you leave that space? Well, I loved every day of that, but uh, I was writing books and the business community was buying them. And when my publisher came to me and said, you know, two thirds of your books are really bought in the secular market with the business community. It just seemed to me like this was a door that was open that I just needed to walk through because I just felt that it would give me a great opportunity to teach uh, the values and the principles that I so embrace in my own life and put them into an entire new marketplace area for me. So I made the transition and it's been a phenomenal one and it was a good decision. Now, one thing that you do is you really incorporate your life as a pastor into your work as a thought leader. So how do those tie together? Well, the principles are the same. The principles work in the secular community community and the religious community, they're just great principles. They're life principles. And uh, what I've discovered is that you just take life principles and apply them in context to who you're with and what they're doing, and uh, then give them some practice on how to kind of get started. And uh, they'll ask you to come back. And that's the, kind of the story of my life. That's what I've been doing. <laughs> As a part of your life, at the end of each year, you reflect. I do. And this is how this intentional living was that's birthed. Correct. Could you tell me about that process? Correct. The last week of every year, I look at my calendar. I don't travel, don't speak, and basically I review every day, uh, hour by hour, what did I do, who was I with, what happened, and I evaluate keep a legal pad beside me. This is something I want to do again next year. This is something I surely don't want to do. This is where I invested my time wisely. This is where I didn't invest my time wisely. And what reflection really turns experience into insight. In other words, very simple. Experience is not the best teacher, although we hear that all the time. We'll say experience is the best teacher, and that's not true. If if experience was the best teacher, then everybody as they got older would get better. And yet I know a whole bunch of people, they're getting older. They're not getting any better. So it's not my experience experiences that make me better. It's the ability to evaluate my experiences and pull lessons out of what I have done and who I've been with that really is going to help me. And that's where intentional living really comes in. Intentional living is all about not only going through life, but learning through life and not only learning, but also applying what you're learning. And so intentional living is almost like front end thinking. You know, we hear the expression all the time, all is well that ends well. That's true. But let me tell you something, all is well that begins well. And I've never seen anybody end well if they didn't begin well. And so intentional living, it's between beginning well and ending well. It just kind of guarantees that both of them are going to happen. It's, it's kind of like a bridge. Intentional living allows you to start well. It also lets you finish strong. Now, some people may be a little scared to go on that intentional path, right? <laughs> and, and, and I mean, because that's why a lot of people don't get started living intentionally. Yeah, sure. So how do you get past that fear of living on purpose or intentionally? Well, the great the greatest way to overcome fear is to realize how ridiculous your thinking is. And, and watch this. If I say, well, I, I'm not sure I want to live intentionally. I'm not, I'm not certain what that means. Let me just turn that around. You're living unintentionally. And I've never met a person who lived with lack of intention that was successful. I mean, I've never heard a person say, you know, I just, I just really accomplished a lot because I was unintentional. I, you know, I got on top of the mountain, have no clue how I got there. No, no. Every person that is successful is successful because they did it on purpose. You see, most people, they accept their life. They don't lead their life. And, and, and the intentional living is all about, let me help you learn how to make the right choices. Let me help you lead your life correctly. Once we do this, and what's so beautiful about this, this is so simple. You know, when somebody comes to me and says, you know, I I can really improve your life, well, I have to ask myself, well, how many changes am I going to have to make? How much time am I going to have to make? Intentional living is the easiest way to upgrade your life. Because what I tell people is, I don't need you to be intentional 24-7. Let's start with 30 minutes. What would happen if every day for 30 minutes you said, okay, I'm going to be an intentional person in adding value to someone else? Okay, what does that mean? I'm going to give five minutes of thinking, who am I going to be with today? Okay, then 20 minutes of adding value to that person, and then five minutes of reflecting how did it work. Well, if you do that for 30 minutes, you're going to find that 30 minutes is going to be the most profitable 30 minutes of your day. And it's going to be profitable because you were intentional. See, Opportunity is already around us. You see, people who wait for opportunity to prepare are already too late. So what I do is in intentional living, I I teach a person, be ready now to act. Be ready now to be intentional. And as the opportunity comes, 
you can seize that moment much more successfully. And speaking of seizing the moment and, and living intentionally, um, you talk about these elevator people, <laughs> right? I thought that was just the cutest thing, right? Yeah, because sure. t- t- tell me who these elevator people are, whether they're in your home life, your professional yeah. life. Well, first of all, they're everywhere, okay? <laughs> uh, tr- tr- trust me, you, you never get rid of elevator people. And, and the whole elevator principle is some people lift you up, some people bring you down. I mean, when you push the elevator, uh, sometimes you go up, sometimes you go down. Well, the people that lift us up, we want to be around them all the time because it's they live and help us with encouragement, and, and we can hardly wait to be with them. People, but I know some people, you know, they don't even have an up button. <laughs> it's, 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 it's all down, you know what I mean? You, and you push the elevator, and you, you, know, you get inside there, and there's only one letter, and it's letter B, and it stands for basement, you know, and you just know they're going to pull you down. And, and they sap you, you know what I mean? They, you just see them coming, and you think, oh, my God gosh, you know, I'm, I'm feeling tired. You know, I, I need a break. I need an aspirin. I need something. And what I basically t- teach is the fact that, that we are either in relationships. I mean, I can teach relationships with a person, whether it's marriage, uh, any kind of relationship, business. I, I can teach it in about 60 seconds. You are either a plus person or a minus person. No in between. You're, you're either adding value to people or you're pulling energy from people. And so you got to ask yourself, what am I doing? And it's very simple. If, if people want to be around you, you're a plus person. And if they don't want to be around you, you're, you're, you're a minus. I mean, if you walk into a room and all of a sudden everybody leaves, you're a minus person, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's not happening. Here's what I want you to understand. We are naturally selfish people. We all are. I am. You are. I mean, we're, we're just born selfish. Okay. Which means we start off basically as a minus person. We we start off saying, what are you going to do for me? How are you going to take care of my needs? When are you going to make my day? It's all about me. But the switch has to be flipped. And the only way you and I can become a plus person is to be intentional because the natural pull of gravity is down. And so... I have to make a decision, and that decision means I've got to make a choice to add value to people. Intentional living is all about, on the front end, saying, I'm going to add value to the people I'm around. Who am I going to be with? How can I add value to them? And at the end of the day, did I do that? So I wrote the book because here's what I know. When a person reads this book, it is not only the secret of them becoming successful quicker and more significant, but it is the quickest, easiest way to get there because it's a choice. And in matters of choice, uh, once we make them, they can be revolutionary in our entire life. And intentional living is truly about how to live a, a very significant life that every day not only gives you fulfillment, but every day adds value to other people. And that's what's so beautiful. And significance is misunderstood. I think most people think, well, okay, okay, if I'm going to be significant, I get to get a certain age, certain amount of money, certain position, certain amount of influence. Someday I can be significant. And this book says, no, 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 today you can be significant. Because every person now can be intentional in adding value to someone else. In the book, I talk about kids. I talk about Celine, who's 16 years of age, whose father took her to India, and she went to a village, and they they had no English teacher. And she said, Dad, I I would like to bring an English teacher to this village. She's 16. He said, Honey, how are you going to do that? She said, well, I have, I have a birthday. She was 15. Her 16th birthday was coming up. And, and she said, I'm going to ask, instead of them giving me birthday presents, give, give me money, and I'm going to see if I can raise enough money to put an English teacher in this little village. And here's what's incredible. And her dad said, well, your friends don't have that much money. She said, no, I know. I'm going to invite the parents of my friends. And she did. She raised enough money got an English teacher, went back to India, put her in position there, and was so fulfilled with this act. I mean, she's a 16-year-old girl that she emailed me, and she said, John, she said, I know what I'm going to do for my 18th birthday. She said, I'm going to go back to the same village, and I'm going to build a school for that village. Wow. Now, you see, in the book, I talk about once you taste significance, success will never satisfy. And you say significance is not about you. It's It's about helping others. It's always about intentionally adding value to people. And we have to do that because we're naturally selfish. So when we're not intentional, almost all of our life is towards me. We have to be intentional to turn that around and say, okay, it's about you. It's about me adding value to you. And the moment that I do that, you see, why I'm so excited is because this book is going to give people an opportunity to taste significance. And I love that. We have a way that people can get online with a start7day.com. Start7day.com is a free deal where people can just go on and they start with me and I give them three minutes a day. And I do it for seven days because I want them to get in the habit of doing something, adding value to people. It's totally free. But if they go to start7day.com, I give them three minutes every day of which I'll give them an idea. And this is what I love. And again, it doesn't take much to make a big difference. You said intentional people fill their calendar. They don't let other people... (laughs) 
won't <laughs> feel it for them. You don't think of it like that, but it's like a common sense way to think to live intentionally. See, the question is not, will your calendar be full? I mean, if you go up to almost any person and say, are you busy? Well, yeah, I've got things to do. I've got jobs. So I'm busy. So the question is not, will your calendar be full? The question is, who will fill your calendar? And the moment that I become passive, accept my life, everybody else is filling my calendar. The moment that I become intentional, I start filling it with priorities, things that make make a difference. And again, that's what intentional living is all about, about us getting on the front end and being intentional to get the return that we want on the back end. I know it's kind of hard to kind of sum up everything, but what would be that one piece of advice that you would give that person who wants to get intentional? They're looking mm-hmm. for purpose, but they just kind of are confused about where to go and how to start. Well, first of all, I think everybody wants this. I'm not sharing something that is void in a person's life. I think every person wants to make a difference. If I looked and said, would you like to make your life count? I think everybody would say, hey, I want to make my life count. It reminds me of when Reese Witherspoon several years ago uh, won an Oscar for Best Actress on Walk the Line, the Johnny Cash. And when she accepted it, she said, June Cash, his wife, when they would ask June what she was doing, she'd say, well, I'm just trying to matter. I'm just, I'm just trying to matter. And, and Reese closed her speech by saying, and that's what I'm trying to do. When I heard her do that live, I, I said to myself, I think everybody wants to make their life matter. So I asked myself, how can I write a book that just puts it together for it? Because I think what's key is for people to understand, you can make your life matter now. And it isn't something that's so difficult only a few people can achieve. So get the picture. I can be significant today, and it's something that I can achieve myself. I, <laughs> I have an expression sometimes when I communicate or write, is I write very simply so everybody can understand. And I, I, the expression I use is I put the cookies on the lower shelf so, so that everybody can have some. Hey, it's obvious I've had a few, okay? <laughs> so I, I, want everybody, I want everybody to have a cookie. I want everybody to grab hold of this. And so I said to myself, how do I do this? And one of my chapters in the book is start small, believe big. What I basically said is start right where you are. It's, it's the Mother Teresa when they ask her about feeding the world, and she said, don't try to feed the world. Start with one. This book says start where you are. You don't have to have a new life. You don't have to have a new title. You don't have to have a new position. It doesn't even have to be a new day. It can be today. But you have to be intentional. And that's the key. You have to be intentional. Throughout the entire book, I give my life, my journey, that I wanted to make a difference, doing something that made a difference with people that could make a difference at a time when it made a difference. And and so it's kind of my story. But what I do then is I turn around around Crystal and I say, okay, you write your story. Because you see, when I was in my 20s, my assistant for Christmas gave me a book. I opened it up and the the front cover said, the greatest story ever told. I thought, oh my gosh, because I love to read. I thought, this is gonna be amazing. I opened the book and every page was blank. And she wrote a note. She said, John, your life is before you. Fill these pages with kind acts, good words, matters of your thoughts. Wow. And then she said, and make your life significant. And that's the day I realized I'm either going to read my story or write my story. 